Hello and welcome to Kotak Money Watch, a podcast series where we talk about news and views on the finance stories and how they affect you. And today uh, we have taken an interesting topic which again deals directly with money like we had done the last time around and it is more from a long term perspective about how to set your financial goals. And to talk about it today with us is Mr. Kamlesh Rao, the Executive Vice President at Kotak Mahindra Bank. Thank you very much Kamlesh for joining in. And it's, it's quite, it's, first of all, it's a slightly intimidating a topic to be talking about, that financial goals. You t- tell that to a 25-year-old and he'll yawn. You tell that to a 43-year-old and he will wonder. And so what is the starting point? It's too muddled and too huge a topic. Where do you propose, how do we start even thinking about it? The first step. Actually, thanks to uh, politics, uh, financial planning is not such a great word because governments keep planning for right. years together, then they are in tenure for five years and then you know how fiscal deficits still uh, don't meet uh, what is the requirement. Having said that, uh, in a very simplistic term, financial planning is all about uh, giving direction to your goals. And uh, you know, whilst we have a uh, different definition of goals, it's, it's very essential to keep goals uh, defined in time frames. Mm-hmm. So you have first take the uh, block of the short term ones. Typically we define short term goals that typically uh, less than three years type. So something like wanting to go on a holiday, uh, a little more specific, wanting to go on a holiday to Europe in uh, three years time from now is a short term goal. Uh, then you have these uh, medium term goals which could be typically between three to ten years time and typically everybody wants to buy a house. Uh, if you are in Bombay that's your uh, uh, most desired uh, goal that you would like to have uh, which typically falls in your uh, three to ten years kind of a time frame. And then, of course, is the long-term goal, which could be uh, about your retirement, about uh, you know uh, your children getting married. Uh, but that's the little tough one because you know when you are just about to get married and not married at this point of time, planning for your kids' uh, uh, marriage as a financial goal is a little long off. And hence, uh, goals need to be defined well. I think that's the essence uh, of the entire financial planning exercise. And having done that, then it becomes easier. It gives uh, the financial planning gives direction to your financial goals. It tells you what you should do, what you should not do, where should you not spend money. And I think that makes the whole uh, exercise of financial planning relevant. Right. And here you're not exactly talking about your day-to-day requirements. Here when we talk about goals, it's not about budgeting for the month. Like you said, a planning a holiday in Europe will require some amount of milestones that at the end of three months I should have this much income and all of that. So again, how, how specific should we be in terms of... Uh, planning. Uh, could you give a couple of examples as to how specific should one be? Because otherwise you might feel you're breaking your head on something and wasting your time when you should be playing with your kid, for example, sure. at that time. So how specific should one be? No, we have a very uh, uh, commonsensical way. We, we, we normally uh, prescribe to our customers uh, on the priority banking side because they plan uh, for their money. Is essentially, goals need to be smart. Okay, mm-hmm. So smart essentially means it should be specific. Be specific about your goal uh, and goals need to always get converted into money value and money value as of today because uh, all of us know that if I can go to Europe and, uh, in about 2 lakh rupees today, 3 years from now if I want to go to Europe, the 2 lakhs may not be uh, sufficient because we have this uh, animal called inflation which hounds uh, all around us. So uh, going back to goals, it should be specific, it should be measurable and therefore uh, it's important that every year you take stock of your statements and see whether you save that much amount of money for your holiday uh, three years from now. Uh, you know, sometimes we have this thing of uh, 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 goals which are, uh, you know, not, not very relevant. Okay, so mm-hmm. you, you want to go to the moon, uh, you want to have, you want to do something which is completely right. not uh, relevant and therefore we advise people to stay away from it. So it should be uh, specific, measurable, uh, attainable. Uh, relevant and the most important one which the T stands for is the time frame is critical. So you say what I want to do in what time frame is important because buying a house in three years and buying a house ten years from now can have immense difference to your entire financial planning exercise. So that's very important. But again at the other side uh, we are talking about when you're talking about financial goals there is an ambition involved there in there somewhere. So how do we know that we are not doing too little and uh, in, in the previous podcast, which, which will be released soon, is we talk about how uh, you, you should not be doing too little, but should not be stretching yourself too much too. So is there, how do we know that? How do we walk that line? Of See, if you convert uh, ambition into a value, it becomes easier. For example, uh, any goal, when you monetize it, is where the ambition comes in. Uh, so we normally advise again to uh, people that uh, you should be ambitious, but there's something called must-have 
and could have goals. Yeah. So mm -hmm. we advise people your must haves should not be very ambitious because sometimes you can completely move away from your goals because your must haves are very very ambitious. Your could haves uh, could be a little ambitious. Let me define ambitious for you. Ambitious is not about buying a five crore house three years from now or ten years from now. Right. The ambition has to be built in the time period. So you say, whilst my 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 buying a house of a particular value, say a one crore house in Bombay or a one and a half crore house in Bombay, is an ambitious target. The ambition comes in when you want to buy it in three years instead of five years, or five years instead of seven years. So you build the element of stretch or ambition in the time period of your goal and not in the value of your goal per se. And that makes the whole uh, process in financial planning simpler and attainable. And then uh, how about reviewing it from time to time? Because there are, there are times when you have certain unforeseen circumstances hitting you or even from the government perspective, the price of fuel about three years back has probably doubled. So when, when these things happen, uh, how often do you, because what happens then is uh, you've written something just like the five-year plan or the government policies you spoke about initially. And then you need to re-forecast your forecasts over and over again, which makes it quite a demoralizing exercise. Sure. So since this is part and parcel of the game, uh, what is your opinion on reviewing the whole thing over and over again, depending on what's happening around? How should one view it? You know, this is uh, the whole exercise of financial planning because it uh, even the short-term ones are about three years, which is uh, as, as, as well as the government works, and the long-term ones can be 30 years. You need a financial planning tool. Right. Uh, you need support in terms of a financial planner, which could either happen from the bank or a particular person who would provide you that advice. And therefore, uh, for every of your short-term goals and your medium-term goals and long-term goals, there is a plan in place. And there are measurable points at e each level. Uh, the kind of investments that you make. Uh, let me common sensically say, see, goals is like a map. Okay, So you have a map to reach a particular place. You may have uh, shortcuts to reach there, which can get you faster. So in investment parlance, equity can get you there faster. I mean, not a great time to talk about equity right now, but equity returns are normally higher than the debt returns. So depending on your risk profile and the goals that you set, which is like a map, you can have the shorter way of going there, you can have the longer way of going through debt instruments or fixed mm -hmm. deposits, which will take you a little more time. But whichever financial planning tool you make as per your profile, it needs to be spread out on an Excel spreadsheet. And at every point of one year, two years, three years, right. you've got to measure with whatever you have invested and saved, is it taking you there or not taking you there? Let me give you an example. All of us do... Uh, uh, systematic investment plans. Okay, right. You spend some amount of money, keep some amount of money, say in mutual funds, every month. And suddenly over a two years period, you realize that the markets have not done well. Let's take an example today. Over the last two years time, the markets may have not generated a positive return at all. And therefore your SIPs, right. if you look at it today, will show you negative returns. Hmm. And you suddenly wonder, whether I have, did I make the wrong investment? Because I put money systematically as per advice. Right. But if you look at it carefully, it would have given you better negative return or less negative return than the market mm -hmm. okay and therefore your time frame has to be defined well because it's just a turning point we've got data to prove that over a five year time frame or a 10 year time frame depending on the time frame that you lose you right. never lose money by investing in gold you never lose money if you uh, invest in uh, property and if you do systematic investment over a time frame of five years to 10 years mm -hmm. on an average for the last 15 years time it has given you returns of 15 to 16 percent year on year right and that's why Staying on the course is extremely important because after two years, if you evaluate that this is not the right time and therefore you move out, maybe mm -hmm. just about the time when your investment is going to generate return for you. And therefore, discipline when you right. do financial planning for either a three-year, five-year, 10-year, 15-year time frame is extremely important. And therefore, a tool, a financial planner or a bank that helps you do your financial planning Mm -hmm. is the essence of being able to do a efficient financial planning exercise. So then, like you said, there are a few asset classes. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm using a jargon when you should be using. But yeah, like for instance, uh, equity or gold. Uh, when do you know that you're doing the right thing? Because you, you hear so many rumors, you hear so many people talk about things, whether it's a tip or whether it's a, a, you know an expert telling you where to invest. And you feel that, look, my friend just went, again, a cliche, laughing to the bank by selling off stocks of one particular company or invested somewhere which got him higher returns. So should we just block everything and like you mentioned, 10 to 15 year time frame, put that money in an, a systematic investment plan and not bother about how much you're earning right now? Because uh, uh, that no, dilemma is always there. I, I, I wouldn't say the same size fits all is a, is a, is a right uh, tool for financial planning because mm -hmm. different people uh, have different risk profiles. 
So I may be a guy who's ready to take a little more amount of risk. It's a function of whether uh, I'm in a family where both husband and wife earn, or I'm a family in which only I earn and dependents are uh, large. So it could vary. And therefore, uh, getting to a uh, correct bank who provides you this kind of an advice or a financial planner is extremely important. Right. Uh, and depending on your risk profile and the key factor of inflation, I think in financial planning, you have to keep in mind that what your money can buy today mm -hmm. will not be able to buy the same thing three years, five years uh, uh, down the line. And therefore, inflation is inbuilt into an efficient financial planning tool. And therefore, you need to have the right asset allocation. I'm sorry, you led me to using the uh, <laughs> jargon. Uh, asset allocation essentially means, depending on your profile, mm -hmm. you will have a certain part of your money uh, on the liquid side, uh, which is available, so short term, like bank account, deposits, mm -hmm. uh, and so on. A certain part of your money will be in the equity class, again, depending on your risk profile. And right. certain part of your investment would either be in real estate or long-term debt. And if you plan this well mm -hmm. and plan for a period of time, okay, my sincere advice, your friend made money by selling something is not the reason whether you should buy or sell what he bought or sold. Because he could have just been lucky at the right time or you right. could be unlucky at the wrong time. So financial planning is not about tips. Financial planning is about... Uh, first, understanding your own risk profile and based on that, making the investment in different asset classes and then staying on course for a longer period of time, right. but evaluating the course at regular intervals of one year, two years with your bank or with your financial planner to see whether the course is right or you need slight mid-course corrections to make sure that you rebalance your portfolio. Right. That's the essence of financial planning. Nicely put. Thanks a lot, Kamlesh, for your time. Uh, this is... Uh, Obviously, this kind of a topic is, it cannot be explained in 15 or 20 minutes, but you're quite succinct in your observation. So let's hope we, we learn a little something out of it. By you, you mentioned discipline and then you mentioned review. So these are the two things that if you, and one size fits all, don't work. Sure. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot.